How are we doing? I, I can hardly complain when I hear people talking when this starts. It's a communication seminar, right? I, I got to admit, I'm, I'm not feeling great this morning, so bear with me. Um, Bourbon Street offers a lot of fun things to do. Um, and to get the full New Orleans experience, sometimes you come back and you, and you make a mistake. In my case, um, the Mississippi River is a wonderful, wonderful body of water, but it turns out no matter how thirsty you are, stay away from the water. It's really, it's not good for your health. It leaves you kind of feeling poorly the next day. Um, to just to start off with, I, I love seeing a crowd full of people because it, it means that probably communications is meaning more and more to you. Um, it's meaning more in terms of how it helps you meet your mission. Before we get too far along, I, I did want to recognize, and I'll do it again towards the end, but I wanted to recognize my team members who are up here. If you could give them a round of applause. They, they don't know what to do with that. They're used to being behind the camera, uh, but they're very, very good people who are doing very good things. Um, and, and anything that I talk about that's an accomplishment that we've made or, or anything that we're doing, um, to support you really comes down to those folks doing the work. Um, just to start off with, I want to go with something we all know. You can't really see that quote at all, can you? I'll read the quote. The release of atomic power has changed everything except our way of thinking. Albert Einstein said that. Um, so we entered the atomic age. What you might not realize is that we've also entered the information age here recently. I don't know exactly when you could say that it happened. Um, but it's obviously it's changing everything. Um, when my father was born in 1950, uh, they didn't have a television set in the house. Now, now it's pretty widespread that we have televisions, right? But I mean, if you think about the evolution of communications and how quickly it's changed, it's really mind blowing. Um, right now, there are 118.4 million televisions for 323.7 million Americans. Half of those televisions now aren't just regular broadcast televisions, but they have video on demand. Um, and, and when you look at that, that's pretty amazing. But another important thing to point out is that television watching, traditional broadcast television watching, has peaked and begun to fall. In 2010, among all age groups, um, it, it, reached, it reached the watermark. Um, until that point, for every year since 1948, um, television watching and, and having televisions had grown. Here's a quote from Mark Twain that um, doesn't quite pop off the screen. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog, right? So not only, television watching is actually something that's, that's almost coming out of vogue. It's almost, in time, the way we watch television or the way we look at television in the traditional sense is actually going to go away. Um, it's getting harder to sell large televisions right now. Um, screen time is increasingly dedicated to smartphones. And as Americans right now, we spend about 10 hours on screens every day. 10 hours on screens every day. And if you're on your screen right now, I'm not offended because you've got to fill that whole 10 hours at some point. Um, it, it's really, if, if you look at how, how the telephone and, and how the smartphones change your life, it's changed nearly every aspect of your life. And, and I'm not saying this, you know, just to throw out some weird stats. It's, it's because we who want to serve people, who want to serve veterans, have to look at how our culture is changing and how communications is changing the way uh, we interact with one another and with businesses and how it affects our daily lives because it affects our veterans' daily lives, Right. So for us to understand uh, how we can better serve veterans, we have to, we have to understand technology. It, and it's not just changing lives, it's changing the world and it's changing every aspect of how we interact. Um, communications right now is a vehicle for revolutions. There are social networking-based revolutions that have happened in the last few years. The Arab Spring probably wouldn't have been possible without social networking. Um, they're also a vehicle for, they're a major factor in determining election outcomes. Um, the president, I know no one else gets it, but the president tweets me on my phone pretty regularly. So I get to see what's going on with him, but think about how much that's changed. The other day we were in the airport and when the, the ban came out on, on transsexuals in the military, 
the president sent out a tweet, and it said, after, uh, so, after speaking with my generals, I've made a major decision, something along those lines, and then it was dot, dot, dot. And I thought, oh my God, are we going to blow up Korea? What's going to happen? About 23 minutes later, the rest of the tweet came through that he, it was actually a ban on, on transgendered people in the military. Um, and, and I'm not making any comment on politics or anything else. I'm just saying that think about how much that's changed. Foreign leaders are put on watch by Twitter. That's happening right now. Um, from the, like I mentioned, the Arab Spring, you look at the ice bucket challenge, um, you can see how things are interacting, how we interact is changing, how we're able to help veterans is going to be impacted by that as well. The good news really is that we're halfway there. Um, here's a George Patton uh, quote. There is only one tactical principle that is not subject to change. It is to use the means at hand to inflict the maximum amount of wound, death, and destruction on the enemy in the minimum amount of time. Doesn't that sound like old blood and guts to you guys? As people who served in the military, we're inherently good at communications, right? That's how we end up at formation on time, because your platoon sergeant tells you be there 15 minutes early, um, but someone before him had told him 15 minutes early. So you get to be there about an hour and a half, by time, hour and a half before the formation actually begins. Um, but it's ingrained in us. Communications, how you reach out to people is ingrained. One of the things I, I, I always find fascinating that I, I never found when I got out of the military and the corporate world was, how many sailors do we have out here or Marines? Anyone raise your hands? Others have heard the words, aye, aye, sir, right? Aye, aye, sir. What does that mean? It means I understand and will obey. So in that quick little response, you can tell someone, I got it, I know what you want, and I'm going to do it. That, that's something that we in the military carry out with us. It's not something that you necessarily get in the, the civilian population, um, but it's an extremely valuable sentiment. Wars are won and lost, and this isn't just now. This goes, you go back to the Civil War, go back before that, but wars are won and lost based on the speed and accuracy of communications, right? Um, I mean, the Union battles, won and lost, uh, just based on who got there with the most information and was able to react to it quickly enough. Um, and, and if you think about it, how much has communications changed the way we experience wars and, and conduct wars? Um, I remember a story about one of the first amphibious landings of the Vietnam War, um, and all these reporters were waiting on shore when the Marines came in. And this general looked out at the reporters and he said, you've ruined my war. They knew in advance and were able to report on that. But not just that, um, when casualty reports started coming home, daily updates in, uh, from Vietnam, that really changed the public sentiment towards the war, right? In a way that hadn't happened in Korea or, or in uh, World War II before that. But if you think about it now, cyberspace is its own battlefield. I mean, we're, there are battles being fought right now um, between the United States and, and China and, and Russia that are they're all just being done in the cyber world. Um, you can attack people's infrastructure. You can do all these things. I'm not going to go through any techniques for attacking another country's infrastructure for you today. But I do want you to just start thinking about how important this stuff is because ultimately it's going to, we're going to need to get on board to uh, keep doing the mission we want. And, and one of the other things I'd just like to point out, whether you had an AFSC in the Air Force, an MOS in the Army and Marine Corps, a rate in the Navy, um, we all at one point were held accountable for training, right? We, we would, you don't just go and jump out the aircraft on your first day if you're going to be airborne. You've got to go through the training. You've got to get certified. You've got to stay up to speed. When the equipment changes, you have to change, right? This is something that we've all experienced before, F-4s to F-18s. We have to stay current. That's just very important. And when there are new tools available, if we're not using them, um, you know, we risk really becoming obsolete. There's a famous General Mattis quote when someone asked him, they said, what keeps you up at night? And Mattis said, nothing. I keep other people awake at night. <laughs> and he's got a lot of great quotes. Um, but by our nature, we're a fighting people, right? We're fighters. We go in, and, and, and that's what coming back to DAV means. It means staying in the fight. 
Um, and, and it still remains that life and death decisions can be made based on our ability to help veterans. If you're a chapter service officer, you can find a veteran who's at their last rope, right? They're just, they're a statistic waiting to happen. And if you're able to get to them, communicate to them, even just reach out to them and say, hey, look, I'm on this. There's a better, you know, there's some hope coming. You can change someone's life. Um, when it comes to protecting benefits or extending benefits, um, think how much that uh, improves the quality of someone's life. The quote about the, uh, the quote from General Mattis, though, is that we shouldn't go to sleep at night and wonder if we've made a difference that day or, or wonder if we're doing the right thing. We should be doing everything we possibly can to make sure our mission moves forward. And, and that's kind of the sentiment that I want us to take forward. I, I want us to know that we're taking the resources we have, and I want us to know that we're employing them and making a difference. Um, DAV, you know, is, is kind of a, some people, your family members probably more than you think it's maybe a hobby, but it's not, it's a cause. It's being part of something, and being part of a fight, um, and you're an important role in that fight. Um, and here's a quote from, oh, oh there's General Mass. There he is, Mad Dog, give him a hand. Um, Here's a quote uh, from General Al Gray, who was the co a commandant of the Marine Corps. He, he's one of the few commandants who felt so connected to the infantry that he, he took his, his official portrait in his camis. Communications without intelligence is noise. Intelligence without communications is irrelevant. Think about that. You're subject matter experts. You know service like no one else knows service. You know the transportation network like no one else knows the transportation network. If you hold on to that and don't share that with others, what good are you? What good is it to know all these things? Well, you can help a veteran one at a time, but if you're able to communicate to a larger group of people, it extends the impact. It extends what we're able to do for them. For DAV to achieve victories, for us to achieve victories for veterans, whether that's recruiting drivers, getting new members on board, um, getting people to job fairs, we need to communicate. We have to get the word out about these things. And you can sit and, and you can say, well, you know, I, I have these other important jobs and, and I don't deny that at all. You have plenty of things, right? It, sometimes DAV can feel like the Grand Canyon and you just keep truck chucking rocks, but the work's still going to be there, right? You're still going to still have a big mission to accomplish. What you can feel good about, though, is that when you start using communications and start effectively working outreach programs, you can start using a bulldozer instead of just throwing them by hand. Um, everything that you know about DAV needs to be passed along. The reason why you're here today isn't just to enjoy the great river water of the Mississippi. It's really to take information back and make DAV's mission better. Take it back and, and make it work. And we need to do that, and that's what I hope all of you will do. You're ambassadors to DAV in this capacity. You're probably chapter leaders, um, chapter commanders, department leaders, department commanders. At any level, we need to take the information back and share it. So I'm going to start getting a little bit more into brass tacks. Let's talk about the little armory that we put together for all of you. It's an armory, it's an outreach armory. It's available on the members only section of the website. Um, and before I really get started, uh, I wanna talk about who, who should be using these resources. Raise your hand if you're an active member of DAV. Raise your hand if you've been through the claims process yourself. Everyone's hands are up, right? You can put your hands down, I'm not trying to tear a rotator cuff or anything. Every one of you is, is capable and educated to be a spokesperson for DAV. You do not need to come to the national organization to say, can I talk about DAV? Can I, uh, can I go to the media to talk about DAV? If you're a chapter leader, um, you have access to press releases that you can send to the media to take a national issue and make it local. The reporters want to cover it. They really do want to cover it. I see people out here who I've seen on Google because we search, you know, we look up what's going on with DAV out in the field, and I've seen you. 
I've seen you in the papers. I've seen you uh, when you help veterans get medals. I've seen your community papers and everything else. You're a spokesperson for DAV. That doesn't always have to be the media coming to you because they won't. They're not going to come to you necessarily. It's you coming to them. It's you looking at what's going on in the Commander's Action Network, um, looking on in other areas. Um, but let me, let me get back to this. We have a couple tools up here, and, and the pictures are pretty small. But what do we have out there for you? We have the PSA Toolkit, a very new one that just came out last week that all of you should have, the Volunteer Driver Recruitment Resource. We have the Veterans Pulse Survey. We have the e-newsletter toolkit, which also is new in the last quarter or so. Um, you have DAV Magazine. You have DAV.org. You have Thank a Vet, and you have a resource that we create on, on speech writing and delivery. You have the language guide, the brand guide. Um, you have a fleet of videos uh, and speeches that are available online, and you have the publicity guide. You have social networks, which are a huge thing, and I know James had a bigger crowd probably than I do. Hey, folks, by the way, if you're standing in the back, if you can, there's probably some empty seats if you want to move in and, and, and find one. Um, we have Instagram, YouTube, and Flickr. We have, we have plenty of resources out there. What, what I'm not including that's on, that I don't have a graphic for, but we have the Chapter Officer Guide, the Benefits Protection Kit, the Women Veterans Resource, the Long Journey Home, we have the Just Be Kids fundraising drive. We have the drive for your community package with Ford. We have a webmaster webinar. We have a ton of webinars, actually. Um, we have a bunch of information that's available to you that will help you um, with your mission of running DAV. Um, these specific resources are more geared outwards. They're geared towards promoting DAV, um, leveraging opportunities, and things like that. How many of you saw Executive Director Jezinoski's report yesterday? One of those tools that's coming your way is volunteerforveterans.org. What did you guys think of that? Are you pretty excited about that? Yeah. It's a really cool idea. It's like, well, why didn't we think of that uh, a while ago? Um, but that idea is just one of the many ways that we can leverage technology to make a difference. One of the tools that I'm, I'm really proud of is the PSA Ambassador Resource. Um, all, how many of you have seen a DAV public service announcement out in town? Out in town, out uh, on television, um, they're prolific. It's, it's about as prolific as it's ever been. Every year they come to us and, or, or we have to set up our goals, you know, our metrics to, to see how we're going to do as a department. And every year I say, I'm not sure that we could top what we did last year because we've never gone this far before. Uh, last year we finished over $74 million in donated value. That's more than many, 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 many major corporations dedicate to marketing. Um, this year through June, we have more than $60 million of donated media. This is a media that DAV, you know, wrote a check for. This is media that's out there uh, because our public service announcement campaign is doing so well. Um, the, the trick here is, is that if you're able, as a DAV member, as someone who's a stakeholder in your community, to go to a television radio station, to call a company who has billboards in your area, if you're able to do that, you're going to significantly increase, you can significantly contribute and increase how many PSAs are getting run in your area. Why? Um, first off, let me tell you right off the bat that every one of your television and radio stations has a DAV PSA. That includes your public access. We're very, very prolific about getting this content out there. That's why we have the value that we have. They have it already. Um, and they're probably running it already. I mean, if, if uh, my carpal tunnel syndrome is any indicator, I'm sending out letters and signing letters to these folks all the time. Thousands and thousands of television stations are running our PSAs. But if you come to them and you say, well, you know, we really appreciate you running our PSAs because uh, it helps us with our transportation network, or it helps me as a chapter service officer, or helps our cha chapter service office outreach, uh, because right here in Des Moines, we are uh, getting more veterans who came through because you ran a little bit. Um, one of the rules I have, though, if, if you want to do this outreach, is to be nice. Veterans sometimes uh, take a little bit of a different tact, and we go in some place and we say, damn it, why aren't you running our PSAs? <laughs> well, that, that's, uh, 
you know, that might work in some cases uh, if you're real big and muscular or something like that. But uh, the chances are that they have our PSAs and there's a good chance that they've run them already. So it's better to say, thank you for considering running our PSAs. I just, as a community member, wanted to come out and thank you. Don't assume that they don't have or that they haven't run the PSAs. That's a big, big deal. At the end of the day, the success there, if you're going to be successful in enhancing this, this effort, you have to be inspiring them and encouraging them and being friendly and you don't want to take up too much of their time. You want to be thankful and, and you want to just make them know that there's a local contact here. Um, if you want to send PSAs, if you want to do this, be a PSA ambassador, the public service uh, advertising toolkit is out there. Um, you can find it on the members only section of the website. You can download it. You can look at it, look at it, check it out, and screen through, and you'll get some pretty good instructions on how to do it. If you want to take it a step further and you're sure you're going to do this and you're promising, crossing your heart and hope to die, telling me that you swear to God that if we give you something hard to give to them, that it won't end up under the membership applications that expired because they had the old logo in a closet somewhere, I am more than willing to give you PSA materials so that you can go out there and do the pitching yourself. Um, and we have some forms up here that if, if you're interested in doing a PSA pitch, um, we're willing to do that. That might be swag too, um, especially if you're in a bigger market, if you want to leave a coffee mug or something. I, uh, Don si is Don Sios in here? Well, Don and I, uh, Don Sias, past national commander and past department commander, I went through New York, and we had meetings set up all day with major, major news networks. And it's, it's helpful to have a veteran like Don there who knows the area, knows the people, can explain things about or transportation especially that seems to be a little bit of an issue in New York City. Um, but, but having Don there... There were many cases where we were able to stop and get some face time with people who make very big decisions on millions and millions of dollars worth of don media that they can donate as part of their public service announcement campaign. And, and it worked out very well, but it worked almost just as well when we stopped someplace and we had a meeting set up and the public service manager came back and said, look, uh, you know, maybe called down to the gate in some cases and they said, look, he didn't have time or she didn't have time for the meeting. I'm sorry, and we said, you know what, we just, please, here's a coffee mug, please thank them for me, please tell them that uh, we appreciate what they did, um, and, and in those cases, it worked just as well. The other thing that going down to these stations does is it helps you start a relationship with the media. The public service announcement person doesn't make editorial decisions necessarily on what runs in the news, but building relationships with the media is a big deal. How many of you have been on AM radio before? Anyone? When I was at, when we had the CNA um, in Cold Spring, nearly half of the folks raised their hand. If you, if I guarantee, if 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 all of you who didn't raise your hand went home, called up your favorite morning station, or better yet, even afternoon uh, radio host on on a local AM station, and said, "Hey, look, I just want to introduce myself." I'm a veteran of uh, this era, or I'm a veteran of the Army, Navy, whatever, and I, I just wanted to let you know that if, if you ever want to talk about veterans' issues, please give us a call. We love your show. We love what you're doing, and I'm happy to come on and talk. You'd be shocked. I, I think if we turned around, and all of you did that, and next year we'd be sitting here, and I'd ask that same question, and 99% of you would raise your hand, and the other 1% just didn't have time to do the interview. Um, it's very easy, but these relate, we're building relationships here. We've got to keep the relationships going. Um, being local helps. Getting something from national headquarters is nice. Getting something local is even better. Um, here's our current PSA campaign. I hope it'll play or maybe I'll I am a veteran, and my victory was finding the strength to be a champion. I am a veteran. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. America's veterans are on their most important tour, the tour of their lives. My victory was finishing my education. Mine is proving a disability is not a limitation. At DAV, we're on a mission to help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory is having my new battle buddy. As veterans face their challenges, 
DAV is there to help for victories great and small. I'm a veteran, and my victory is getting the help I needed to put my life back together. DAV offers veterans of all generations a lifetime of support. I'm a veteran. My victory is being there for my family. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Hey, joining us today is Jim Sursley right over here. Jim was in that. Let's give him a round of applause for representing us so well. In, in addition to doing that, Jim helps us pitch public service announcements to station managers as well. And when, when Jim hands you a PSA, you're much more likely to, to take it and take it to heart than when I do. Um, there's going to be a major Times Square activation where basically during a, a week-long period, if you go through Times Square, you're going to be informed about DAV through the billboards, the big billboards on Times Square. Um, we're working with Don and the Department of New York on that activation, um, but we'll also have new creative coming. We're going to update the creative. Stations came back to us and they asked us, they said, well, we, want, we want newer stuff, we love what you're doing right now, and we just want more. It's a fairly unusual thing for a station to come to you and say, we like your creative so much that we want more. That's not, a, that's not something that we've ever experienced before, but when they do, we say, well, yeah, we'll get you some new creative and, and we'll make that happen. Um, I've seen prototypes for the new PSAs. I wish I could show them to you. We're holding out. There's a very good chance that Gary Sinise um, is going to be the voice for those next PSAs, and we, we think that might even help make a, a bigger difference because he's so recognizable. Um, we also have this year coming a partnership again. How many of you are, are aware or saw us on, on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yes. We're, we're doing that again this year. Uh, the week of Veterans Day will be Victories for Veterans Week again. Um, check it out. I think we're going to have one of our own veterans um, possibly as a candidate there. Um, and we're really on track again to stay on the same trajectory that we've enjoyed so far. Here's another uh, kit just for you who, who we were talking about developing relationships with the media. Here's the uh, DAV and Auxiliary Publicity Guide. This is an oldie but a goodie. It's available online. It's a bunch of pages. It's maybe 15 seminars in one if you look at it. It has text in there for, public, for uh, press releases, um, a lot of great help. Um, it goes kind of from basic information on media engagement to in-depth templates that you can use. Um, and it has social media graphic or guidelines now, which is kind of new. This is really a must-have if you're a, a chapter or department outreach leader. Um, how many of you in your chapter or department, and I'm, ser I'm, I'm curious because this helps us make decisions later on. How many of you have someone in your chapter or department that is dedicated to outreach? Okay, put your hands down. And those of you who had your hands down, keep them down. How many of you think that that might be a good idea? So this could be a very valuable thing. Having one person who, that's kind of their lead item. Um, and, and most of the resources that I'm talking about that now fill our armory came from the field. So if that's something that you guys want more work on, Steve Wilson this afternoon is going to give a great class on media engagement. Um, Steve Wilson, who is now a, a doctor. Steve, give him a round of applause for that finish. I feel like a dad putting my kids through school. I'm so <laughs> proud when they're done. Um, no, but the pu publicity guide's a good all-around uh, all thing. Um, if you don't have it, it's, it's very easy to find. Just, just get it um, and, and get into it, and you'll, you'll be surprised what's there. For those who are called to represent, I've already said, you know, there you go, you're all DAV spokespeople now. Congratulations, it's like when I became an internet minister. Um, speech writing and delivery is another thing that you can have at your, at your uh, fingertips that will help you kind of when, when you're called on the spot to do something. If you're giving a speech to a big group, um, come back to us and, and if you need some help, um, we maybe even have a speech or are willing to help you produce a speech that would meet your needs. Um, and I know this one's been sitting out there for a long time, but we really, we're really, really close 
to finishing a, a resource or a, a template DAV presentation on PowerPoint and finishing up a video. I think we might be doing some shooting here yet for the identity video. Um, but, but to give you even more resources, so when the Rotary calls up and says, hey, can you come down and talk to us, um, we, we can go ahead and do that. We had a lot of things come up. One of them was the caregiver's um, effort this, this year, and that uh, it's kind of made it hard for us to concentrate on, on everything we'd want to do. But we will have another resource coming that you can customize and build up yourself to talk about your local statistics um, and we'll get that out to you as soon as we can, along with a video that's updated with Gary Sinise's voice that's kind of that overall mission piece that we've been meaning to update for a while. Um, another, other resources that are available. How many of you have ever done a Memorial Day speech? Veterans Day speech. It happens. If you're not, um, you probably need to raise your profile in other areas. Um, but those speeches, we write a new speech for those every year, which means we have, a, we have a library of speeches that go back for many years. So if you don't like the one you saw this year, you, there's probably some, some other ones from past years. You can take them, you can make them your own, you can update them, you can change the quotes. Um, and, and while I'm talking about those who are called to represent, I'm, I'm not going to take away my whatever you call that. But I would say this. If you're going to represent DAV, if you want to be out front for DAV, you take on a sacred obligation. I'm not, say, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm saying you should do it as often as you can. But you have a sacred obligation then to represent the organization ethically and accurately. That means when, you're, when political season's up, you're not endorsing candidates wearing your DAV cap as if it's a DAV endorsement. You're not trying to tell the public that, you know, DAV endorses this. That means that you're not speaking about issues um, that contradict DAV uh, resolutions, right? As long as you stay within those lines and you're representing the intent and the message of DAV, go for it. If you need some help, call us. We'll help you go for it. Um, so, so that's just enough of that. Um, here's the Veterans Pulse survey that we came out with a few years ago. Um, this is a nice thing to have in addition to everything else where um, how many of you are around people and, and you're talking to a politician and they say they give, throw a stat at you or they throw something out there and you're like, wow, that person's really informed on, on how veterans think. This is something that we did a couple years ago. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a very useful thing. It has some great stats in it that can help us both in our mission um, and in conversations and speeches, it can help you start a conversation with the media. These are things you can throw out when you're meeting with them. Um, here's a stat that maybe would surprise you, maybe not, but it's now a confirmed stat and it has a source. Eight out of ten veterans would serve again. Is that, can't you see that there's a time where you could use a, a stat like that? 95% um, of veterans who served more than 15 years feel that their service had a positive impact on their lives. That's a, I think that's kind of an important thing to know. Um, only one-third of the veterans we surveyed, and this represented all demographics, said that their benefits were explained to them when they left the military. Does that resonate with any of you? Does that seem like an important thing that you can throw out there? A lot of people believe, a lot of people really believe this. We hear it all the time that when people leave the military, they just get their benefits. I, I paused for laughter there, but seriously, they, the public really thinks sometimes that people leave and they just get their benefits. So they might not understand DAV quite as well when they realize that we're out there fighting for those veterans to make sure they do. Um, less than half, 44% of veterans feel they're getting the benefits they've earned. Well, that's a pretty powerful statement on why NSOs are important, CSOs, DSOs, TSOs, service officers in general, right? So the, the Veterans Pulse survey, it's easy to find, veteranspulse.org. Go out there, Google it if you can't remember that. Just Google Veterans Pulse, um, DAV Veterans Pulse, and it's going to show up out there. Um, here's some basics that have been around for a while and probably um, are going to, we'll, we'll probably be looking in the next year or so at updating them. One is the DAV language guide, which kind of helps you with some language guidance, you know, just how to talk about DAV. Um, and the next one is the style book. 
The style book is something, it's a link that you could email people when you're doing banners, when you're doing, uh, when you're trying to get your logo on a cap, when you're trying to get DAV's logo out there. That, that style book that's available in the members only section of the magazine is going to give you the rules and regulations to maintain the consistency of DAV's brand. I've said this for, for years, um, DAV uh, has a mission that changes people's lives, truly changes people's lives. We should take our branding as seriously, the consistency of our branding as seriously as McDonald's, don't you think? McDonald's takes it very seriously because they know the impact. Um, on the talking points, though, and, and, the, and the language guide, the, you're being indoctrinated every time that you listen to a speech, read DAV magazine. How many of you read DAV magazine back to back? That's awesome. If, if you're reading DAV magazine back to back, you can get a pretty darn good idea where DAV stands on issues. If there's a connection that you can see in your community betwe between one of those stories with something you can pitch the media, like I said, you know, in Agata de Vida or whatever that means. It doesn't mean in Agata de Vida. My aunt's a nun. Don't tell her I said that. Um, Here's, here's one that we came out very recently, because not because you'd asked for it, but just because we saw you were doing it anyway, and it worked. It was working extremely well. In fact, we scan, we scan the whole internet for, for information about DAV. We get it all the time. And one of the things we saw recently was that some hospital service coordinators had made a concerted effort to say, holy crud, we're running out of drivers. This is going to be a big problem. We're not going to be able to operate this network, or we're going to have to cut down how many veterans we help. Um, if this happens, what are we going to do? Well, let's call the media. Let's call and talk to the media and, and, and ask them if, if they would be willing to help us with this. And it works. And we're getting articles all the time. We're picking up articles all the time about transportation network uh, needing drivers, transportation network helping people. Either way, whether, whether the story's pitched to help people, um, make people aware of it or, or to make people aware of the need for drivers, it works. It's, this isn't like uh, those articles where, you know, you're saying, well, no one shows up at our bar and lounge operation and we feel like we're becoming increasingly ir irrelevant. This is a, hey, we have a great service program. We have an opportunity for you to thank veterans, for you to recognize veterans, um, and, it, and it's out there. You know, the, uh, the Pay It Forward campaign, did any of you participate in that? Raise your hand if you did. Not enough DAV people didn't, and I'll tell you why part of that is, is because it was volunteer an hour of your time to help veterans. And for most people in this room, the thought of, of volunteering just an hour of your time is, is a laughable kind of thing, right? I mean, an hour is something that you do before you have your first cup of coffee in the morning for a lot of you. Um, but that, wasn't, that, was an, that was a gateway drug to DAV volunteerism, really. That the, the goal of that was to, to spread out, to get, get more people involved. Because how many of you started with DAV saying, I think I'm just going to attend a chapter meeting, see what that's all about. And some of you who raised your hand were elected commander that day, weren't you? <laughs> and here you are, New Orleans. <laughs> um, but, I mean, one point of emphasis is we don't want to go to, the, to the, the media and say we feel terribly sorry for ourselves. But if we go to the media and say, hey, we just got a new van. Now you've provided them with a newsworthy event. There's a press, uh, there's a template out there that you could just update with your own information. You send that out to the media. You've, you're telling them, here's a newsworthy thing. There's a new van coming here that's going to help veterans. Why don't you cover some good news instead of just murders and drugs all the time? We'll say, by God, I think we should do a little bit more murders and drugs all the time. Maybe we'll come down and see what these veterans are doing. Um, so that, that's something that you can do, and we've tried to give you the tools to do it. Um, this didn't come from feedback. It came just from us seeing what was working. Um, and if you have any feedback on it, please let us know. Um, this isn't going to replace onboarding needs that John, um, I'm sure, had multiple discussions about during his seminar, and we're not the Voluntary Services Department um, the communications department, in a lot of ways, is like 3M. Um, we don't we don't make you know we don't make the transportation network work. We just try and help it along. Um, so that that's something. But but get into this and use it. If you're getting a new vehicle, use it. If you need volunteers, use it. 
The more volunteers you bring in, the, the less you have to worry about that onboarding situation because at least a couple of them are going to be patient enough to make it through. Not that John's and, and us on some levels are going to be, aren't going to be fighting about that. Um, I mentioned this before, know your organization. If you read DAV uh, magazine back to back, you're in awfully good shape. Um, when you're done with that, quick piece of advice, if, there is a, if there's a barber shop near a base that you know of, um, where you get your hair cut, don't feel bad if you accidentally forget and leave your magazine in the lobby. We don't mind that at all. Um, anything we can do to spread the news is going to help out. Um, the DAV mag DAV's magazine only comes out once every other month, so we can't cover things as, up, as fast as we'd like to. We've been pouring in, though, to new content for our leadership newsletters and the other electronic newsletters that we're doing. So there's more and more content out there. If you're following us on Facebook, you're getting daily updates on what's going on. Um, how many of you have seen a video here that you didn't see at home? There are only two videos that are new that were presented here. All the rest of that stuff's available on Facebook. So if, if you, if you want to see the videos, they're out there. Go to our YouTube channel, whatever. Um, here's another one that we did that, um, that has had a lot of success, the DAV Thank Event. Um, it's, a, it's an easy way, at davthankevet.org. That's all you need to remember. Around Veterans Day, that campaign will start up again. If you want to thank a veteran, go do it. Um, it's really putting a hook in the water uh, for, for opportunities to connect more people to DAV's cause. Um, I have a question over here. Sir, if you can yell real loud, I'll answer your question. Why isn't it? Yes. The question is, why isn't, it, why isn't the PSA on during the Super Bowl? <laughs> I, I, was, I, was told that, um, I was told by the network that, um, that Super Bowl uh, ads are actually very expensive. So when you see DAV, uh, when you see a placement of DAV, we cannot choose when, where you see it. We get calls that say, why is DAV's uh, radio show on during Rush Limbaugh? I don't like Rush Limbaugh, dot, dot, dot. And I don't care one way or another about Rush Limbaugh. But the answer is because some station was gener generous enough to donate it to us. Um, when Barry was talking about working with corporations and doing more and more outreach and engagement with corporations, if we're going to see ourselves in a Super Bowl commercial, that's probably our best chance at it. But it's just a high, it's a, it's a, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck either. It's, it's, a, it's a very hard thing to get in on. And you'll notice that when you do see a VSO or, or a military charity or whatever represented during the Super Bowl, it's usually, uh, it's usually someone else's foot in the bill for that, like Jeep or Coke or, or, or someone else or whatever it's going to be. Um, but think of that. Please get into DAVthankofet.org. Thank a veteran, and it'll make more people want to do it. You don't need pictures anymore, but it's kind of neat if you do. But this is a way basically to send an e-card to someone and say, thank you for your service, thank you for what you're doing. Um, you get like three messages. It, it takes all of five seconds to do. Um, and, and then you're actually, while you're doing that, you share that on your Facebook uh, or, or social networks, or you even just share the email with your friends, and, and you'd be surprised at what an impact you can make. Here's another one, Electronic Newsletters Toolkit. Um, this resource actually came from the field um, a lot more closely than the others because we kept hearing about this chapter in Virginia that was just, they, they, they were getting 45, 50 active members participating in their, their chapter, which that, that happens some places, but this is from five to 10 people meeting at the chapter to 45 within a course of a few months. Um, it saves money. It makes sense for DAV to want to do that. Um, so we went out to the field and we said, give us your guidance on, on what works. And they did. Um, and we put that together. This isn't a, a finished product. I need you guys to go out there and test it and tell us how it's working and give us more feedback on it. Um, one thing I will tell you, though, is that maintaining our brand consistency is important through this effort. Um, also, uh, it's very important that you're not fundraising electronically. Um, if you have any questions about that, go to the Inspector General seminar. Pass the buck. 
Social networking. Um, hey, boss. I'm, I'm just... Hey, boss. Got a question. Oh, okay. Nice transition for me, not answering yeah, Ronald, questions. Ronald Pandas. Uh, Chapter 9, uh, Oklahoma. There's, there's a question, or I guess I have confusion on when a chapter does social networking or advertising, we're hearing that it has to have the blessing of the national office. Is that or is that not true? Um, well, I mean, first, okay, to start off with, I don't want you advertising unless you have some NEC approved fundraiser or something like that, because I'm not advertising. I do a little bit of advertising. I shouldn't say that. The vast majority of what I'm doing up here isn't advertising because I'm not exchanging money for public service announcement placements. Okay? You're not talking about that. I'm not talking advertising. I'm talking just flat out communications. Chapter so and so does does has these functions going on. Okay. Uh, and what, what has, so by what means do you want to advertise your function? I'm just talking Facebook, Twitter. You do not need my blessing to say that we have a meeting coming up, that we're having a, a Information seminar, you know, bloop, 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 there we go. America wins. Um, back to social networking. Every, this, and this isn't Mark Burgess, I'm, this is just lowly Dan Clare saying this. Every chapter should have a Facebook page. Every chapter who has a Facebook page should have a DAV admin, a national admin on it, and James, is, James can help you with that. Um, it helps you keep things current. You do DAV a disservice when you start a Facebook page or you start your own website because you have some good ideas. And then all of a sudden, um, living in the cyberspace atmosphere for the rest of your life is that meetings are on Tuesday and it was last updated in 2013. Um, you're laughing because you've seen it before, right? You've seen that happen before. That's ugly. That's bad for business. Um, there's a webmaster excuse me, a webmaster class going on out there. Um, so you can update your website, and I think over time that, that stuff's going to evolve too a little bit. Um, I don't have any direct information on that at this stage, but um, keep it up to date. Um, every leader who participates in social networking in this room, how many of you are on social networks one way or another? So if you're doing that, and you consider yourself a leader with integrity who believes in DAV and wants to help DAV, if you see something that resonates with you on DAV's Facebook page, you should be sharing it, right? Thank you. Um, social networks are replacing a lot of the things that, that we used to go to. Social networking is going to be, um, it's a phone book, it's a message service, it's customer service, a lot of customer service. And we're actually working with the service department on something right now that's going to be very exciting regarding um, people who have questions um, about their benefits, about claims and things like that. Um, but that's just coming. It, it's, it's coming probably as fast along as volunteerforveterans.org is going to be. Um, but if you don't uh, have a Facebook page and you recognize the obligation and you love America and your fellow citizens and fellow veterans, if you love America and don't have a Facebook page, you'll reach out to James Killen here, and he'll help you. Um, so please do it. There's other resources. Um, if you Google DAV resolutions, you will be taken to the 2017 legislative program that has all our, our resolutions. Just Google it. You don't have to ask me. You don't have to try and find it on the website or anything else. Just Google it. Um, it'll pop right up. The more of you do it, the more the closer to the top it'll be, um, but that will help you accurately and effectively uh, carry DAV's message. Um, the DAV Commander's Action Network, we had some guy call in the other day who was crazy mad about us not doing something, and we said, well, you're, are you on the Commander's Action Network? And he said, no, and it was like, well, you didn't even sign up. You didn't, you're not even trying. Um, but the Commander's Action Network, how many of you are members of that? It works. If you're not, you probably should be. Um, my, my, my closing thing before I move on, though, it, it, that I want to say, and, and the reason why I'm harping on all this stuff and not showing more videos and stuff, the videos are all out there for you. You can go and find them. 
But if we look around and we look at what's going on with the demographics in the veterans world, we're, we're looking at a, a huge shift um, between now and the next 10, 15 years of, of what our community is going to look like and how people who are in our community are going to want to interact. If we want a legacy, if what you're doing today you think is important enough that it should be going on for future generations, we need to train our replacements. We need to get DAV engaged and involved in what's going on right now. Um, if we don't, it, it's, it's going to be really tough for us to maintain our footing and be there like DAV was there for us. So I want you to keep that in mind. Um, we are seeing, and, and, and I'm not doom and glooming up here, because I'm seeing huge, huge strides. We used to have Google Alerts, Steve, Steve runs them. We used to get five, six Google Alerts about news items that are going on in, at DAV chapters and departments. Now it's, uh, on, on a daily basis, it's 23, 24, 25 different things. That's 25 different events going on that are being publicized for DAV on a nearly daily basis. You guys are really killing it out there. You get it, right? You get that getting a Facebook page or, or getting an uh, uh, electronic newsletter or, or enhancing the way we t talk to the media or having PSAs running in our community. You get that that's helping everything else we're doing. And that's what it's all about. It's not a popularity contest to make DAV, you know, the next uh, thing everyone wants to wear on their T-shirts. It's about helping DAV meet its strategic goals. Um, so I thank you for that, and I don't, I don't want you to feel at all like I'm dooming and glooming up here. Um, I want to share one thing for you, too. This is the DAV communications team. Forgive me if I've told this joke before, but um, you can tell that these are true communications professionals um, because many of them have drinks in their hands, and you can't tell what they're drinking. <laughs> but this is a great team. Please give them a round of applause. And as we go into questions, these are direct dial phone numbers. You can take a picture of it if you want to, whatever you want to do. Um, but I, I, there's, only, there's a few of them, but if you call, you're going to, if I don't pick up, which I usually pick up, um, if I'm there, someone else is going to pick up. But here's some phone numbers. If you need help, call us. My staff is grinning, and they want to help you. Or they're grinning for some other reason. Questions? Um, sir, right here. Dan, thank you for all this information, but I feel that there's one step that's missing. And at a chapter level, I don't have the ability to create a thank you certificate, sorry, thank you letter, the DAV letterhead to that auto dealership that just gave us a thousand dollars. Did, did everyone hear that? Where's the thank you certificate? What if I want to thank these people who give us money? Or what if I want to recognize a chapter member? Um, I, um, that's coming or it's already there. The DAV store. Is Doreen, Doreen, where are you? Doreen, where are we at with that? It's coming. Oh, hand the, it will be in the DAV store. I know that's created. I've seen it come through. We're, we're going to give you the ability to go online and do your thank you thing. And that's a great point. That, that's a, a larger point to be made with all of that is that how many of you have just had to go down and really bust some knuckles at the chapter level or something if you're on the department level? I want to just remind you that our most powerful tool in getting people engaged and involved isn't busting knuckles at saying thank you. I'm serious. It's a, it's a powerful weapon, saying thank you to people and showing our appreciation. When people support us, giving them certificates, when you're dealing with Golden Corral, saying thank you. Th those are big things, so keep that up. Got another question right over here. Oh, right there. John Joe. Oh, yeah, John Joe Deck, uh, Chapter 7, Mobile, Alabama. Retired Coast Guard. Uh, I want to thank you for your blessing. And thank you for your, uh, your squad there, for all the information. But, but where can, also can I find uh, acronyms? 
You put all these uh, letters up there and can never find what the acronym is. They're can you can you name? Uh, uh, there's a bunch of initials that that run off with. Uh, well, Steve's is an education degree. I no, I I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> And it's funny, Mary's not here, but I'm always uh, talking about cracking knuckles. I'm always telling her people don't always understand acronyms. Usually when we say DAV and it's to an outside audience, we say DAV, parentheses, Disabled American Veterans. DAV CAN stands for Commander's Action Network. But if I just say DAV CAN, it tells you go to DAVCAN.org and you can go there and sign up. Um, we don't have like a big league uh, acronym thing, but we try and stay away from them, even when it comes to, we think sometimes, okay, so you're a chapter service officer, and this is a national service officer, and this is a department service officer. Who's going to help me with my claim? The answer is a service officer, right? So you're seeing even language shifts in, our, in the magazine, where even if we're speaking to a totally outside audience, we don't always even say service officer, we say a veterans benefits advocate. We're trying to speak to people on their level and, and help them understand more. Ma'am? Yes, Becky Smith, uh, Clarksville, Tennessee, Commander, Chapter 45. I understand why we want to have the certificates, like maybe through the DAV store, but how about if we just put it online to where we all can print it off at home and have it at hand instead of having to buy it through the DAV store to thank people? Where's Doreen? Uh, I'm happy to do that. Happy to do that. The, the one difference, the one, one thing I just make you aware of is that w when you order outside or you're doing the logo outside, if you need help with that, Doreen's number is up here. Um, vendors are horrible at getting our colors right. They suck at getting our colors right. If you deal, though, with Doreen, who deals with vendors all the time, or the purchasing department, or someone like that, I'm, I'm not asking for your money or to be a go-between or anything like that, but we can help you get the colors right. If you pull down a file and print it, we're, we hope to God you get the colors as close as you can, but we, I think we can do that, no problem. And we'll send out a memo or something when we do that most of you will. Yeah. Sure can. You can, you, you can, um, one difference is that there is a burnt little, you can do that. You can take DAV's logo, download it from the members only section of the website. You'll even find your chapter uh, logo there. You can put on a certificate, write what you want, um, and, and put it down there. Um, the only thing I'd say is the certificates that we give you and, and that you can't do on your own, um, don't use DAV fonts, so there's a little bit of a brand disconnect. I think ours look a little bit better most of the time, but do what you want. Thank those people. Sir. Uh, yeah, I'm Lee Shepard from Chapter 23 in Orange County, California. I'm a member of your chapter. Hi. Yes, well, our senior vice commander, his first name is John. Um, uh, 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 he operates CAD CAM machinery, and he's been making uh, uh, these badges that, uh, with a magnetic name tag. And he also, uh, he, he operates a business, but on, on the side, if you pay for the materials and the plastic, he also does uh, like the little statues and plaques that are plexiglass, and he uh, engraves the words and commemorated to, in bo for both active duty and uh, for, for businesses that do large donations for our chapter. Um, if you would like to get a hold of chapter 23, in Orange County, uh, the senior vice commander. Um, here's the junior vice commander at my side. She might have some business cards. And instead of just a piece of paper to hang on a wall, these also like a, sh uh, a, a you know, it's a plaque, like a little trophy kind of a thing. And, and, and uh, I'm sure he, if you're just willing to support him. Well, he uh, owes he, you a beer for the plug at least, right? Yeah, yeah. So There, uh, there are other certificates and stuff available at DAV store too. If, thank you. If you want. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Dan. Hey. Uh, Rich uh, Tolfa, Chapter 16, Florida. And you keep referring to the Pope. I see you keep doing that up there, right? I was going and for more And you have to a... understand what the Pope is really saying when he does that. He's saying, all you tall dagos and short dagos, get off the grass. <laughs> My aunt's a nun. I didn't say that. 
I don't endorse it. Does anyone have any Irish jokes for me, too? Uh, I've got one last thing again. Uh, what we're going to be trying at our uh, chapter, you know those little stickers? Those little stickers that you see for trip advisors? For what? Make, stickers those, for what? Trip advisors that you see on windows of stores and restaurants. Trip advisors. Uh, see if you get those and just have your chapter and DAV in the year they supported you and put those on restaurants at the front door so they see that that restaurant supports a DAV. Uh, you know, we've looked at that. Uh, we do have plaques and stuff that you can give them to. And, and really, I mean, when it comes to recognizing people like that, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm generally all for it. It can get a little, it can get a little hinky when, you know, when business relationships get involved. But I'm, I'm for it. If it's going to help them, let's do it. But if that's kind of a procurement and a uh, fundraising kind of question. Does anyone else have any questions? Yes. Honor Jones, Chapter 55, uh, Covings in Georgia. I don't really have a question. I just want to make a appreciation yesterday with James. He took me down to his office and we set up a Facebook page for Chapter 55. Took him about five minutes. And uh, it's up and running. It's wonderful. And uh, I had set up a group page, which is not right. I needed a Facebook page. Right. So James to is going to help you get on track with that Facebook stuff. The other thing James can do is when there's big, important national content that's coming out, he can update it for you, which makes, you know, even if you're not quite at the wheel, it, it shows that, you know, the, the information is getting out there in your community. It, it's a great thing. I, I really believe everyone should have a, a Facebook page. That doesn't mean you have to. But you should have one um, if you love America. And if you don't, get out. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Any other questions? Up. Oh, passed outstanding disabled veteran of the year, Bobby Body has a question. Woo! Now, Assistant National Service Officer Bobby Bye, give him another hand. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious if, if there was a, uh, if we wanted to help pitch our PSA for at a specific, uh, um, let's just say NCG Cinemas um, back in Lansing, Michigan, um, but it costs a little bit of money, if we decide to pay out of our own pocket, do we have to get permission from the DAV in order to do that, or can we just go ahead and do that? You don't have to. Um, you don't have to get our permission to donate money so that someone's going to run our PSAs. But God, I hope you don't do that. I, I, I'd rather people not pay out of their pocket for to, to do stuff like. I mean, I guess you don't need my permission. But um, what what I would suggest is that if you talk to us, we'll give you the tools to pitch the PSAs. Um, and I mean. It kind of helps if you're on the PSA. I think that they'd listen a little bit more. Bobby is on the PSA. So um, I'd rather you not spend your money doing that. I'd, I'd rather chapters not spend their money unless, you know, it's part of an improved fundraiser or there's a big thing. You'd be surprised what people are willing to donate if you ask. If you've ever gone to Walmart to ask for some hot dog buns for a cookout or something like that, you'd be pretty surprised, right? So start with the, uh, with the supposition that what the hell, we're a charity, maybe you could donate something to us. Um, and if they're dirtbags and they don't want to do that, you know, just make them feel as guilty as you can and get a good price break. <laughs> or make your leg fall off. Good move. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I lost my leg loving America. <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? We got one more.
Oh, that's great. Yeah, like, like I said, she, so she has a public access show. When you start asking questions, you're surprised what's available out there for you for little or no cost, but for your time, which is very valuable too. Um, but Joe Parsetich um, from Montana does a radio show himself. He's got veterans content on there all the time. He runs DAV PSAs. There's a lot of people who are doing blogs. Um, I mean, the way media is changing, there's a lot more opportunities too for, for us to do different things. But if you want to do that stuff and you want DAV involved and you have questions or, or whatever, you can do this. Hey, who wants to see one of the videos that, that we weren't able to share that uh, I thought was kind of exciting? Now this, when I was talking about TVs, um, and I was saying that TVs getting swallowed by the phone kind of thing, this video was shot um, on a, an iPhone. So let's take a look. This is my new home, my first home in my entire life, and I thank the DAV for it. How is it to be homeless? It's devastating. It sucks life out of a man, at, right out of your spirit. So you manage to get a little energy to get out, but when you get pulled right back again. And that goes on for years and years and years. In my case, 48 years. Sleeping in pickup trucks and cars. This car here was probably the first car I've owned in, uh, have to be 35, 40 years. That's the truth. And what I did was I put some wooden here. Uh, these seats were up. And I have boards that I now use for shelving. And I put three of them together in here and made a, a full length bed in here. I built this bed, and uh, it was good to get it out of storage, and I could watch my TV at night. This room is my hangout room, except for the music studio I'm building in there. But uh, I'm an artist, so uh, I couldn't wait to get my stuff out of storage. My stuff was in storage for over a year and a half. And it broke my heart that it was there because I have I have these things that I've earned in life. This is all I. This is about Joseph. Uh, my degrees, my certificates, and my artwork. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, who are listening, all of this is is comes from the VA and the DAV helping me accomplish this. I would not have any of this if it weren't for these fine people helping me. Cool. That, that was actually that was actually supposed to run during Gary Augustine's. We have so many videos right now that they're hard to keep track of. Where, where we ran the Pearl Harbor story yesterday, which was my mistake. But um, one of the things you saw in there was a certificate. So that's something we touched on before. But this video content, all this stuff's out there for you to use. Um, you just got to use it, and if you can't find it, you got to ask somebody. Okay, so thank you all. We have some uh, we have some things up here. If you want to sign up to be a PSA ambassador on some formal level, um, you can do that. Staple your business card to a, a sheet, and and we'll try and get back with you as soon as we can. 